time for another round of case or not a case. case, or not a case. We have to work really hard to use these noggins when this segment comes along. <laughs> I get a headache every time. It hurts. <laughs> So we have Tom, Tom Mer Merriman, yes, sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. You introduce him. <laughs> Tom Merriman joining us from Merriman Legal. He's back and he's not only testing our knowledge, he's going to test everyone else's knowledge as well. So get involved out there. Don't just leave it all on us, right? Mm -mm. We need your help. So yell through the screen and maybe we'll be able to hear you. Lots <laughs> of pressure. What's the first one? Let's go to the first one. All right. You ready? Let's do okay. this. Okay, Lazy Louie walks like out of guy. a bingo hall. Uh, he needs <laughs> to cross the road. It's a four lane road. The nearest crosswalk is 400 yards away, and he's lazy Lou. He's not walking that far. He doesn't want to go all the way down the street. It's a bright, sunny day. He decides to cross the street. He gets halfway across. Before the, before the crosswalk, huh? Yeah, he's not in the crosswalk. He just crosses the middle of the road. And uh, then as he's about halfway across, Bullseye Bob makes a left <laughs> turn out of the parking lot <laughs> of the bingo hall and hits lazy Louie in stride. Does lazy Louie have a case oh, against no. Bullseye Bob? In California, you would, I know. Yeah. Uh, I want to say no because he wasn't walking on the crosswalk. Right. But I still feel like if you hit someone in the middle of the street, you're going to be at fault. So I think, I think I, he has a case. You think Lazy Louie has a case? Yeah. That's what my gut says, but as well. So I, I guess we'll you both go with that. You are both correct. Lazy oh, Louie does have a case. <laughs> Under Ohio law, if the crosswalk is not readily available. You're not required to walk in a crosswalk. However, you have to yield to cars, right, if you're crossing the street as a pedestrian. In this case, though, Bullseye Bob hasn't entered the roadway yet when uh, Lazy Louie's out in the street. All these so little that's things. The There's a lot of nuance here. Yeah. So Bullseye Bob, he has a duty to pay attention. It's a clear day. You should see him. It's on Bullseye Bob. Now, if it was at night uh, or if there are trees, obstructions, it might turn the other way. Okay, so Makes sense. these are the kinds of issues we r grapple really, with every day. That, for, that varies state to state, then, doesn't it? Because I know in some states you you could lay down in the street if you get run over. It's, it's their fault. It could, yeah. I I don't know the law in all fifty states, but yes, yeah. I would say it varies state to state. In Ohio, it really comes down to uh, if he had established himself in the roadway right. mm -hmm. and he's you can see him, then it, it would fall on the driver. And this is why you really need a lawyer because you know he's talking about 400, oh. 400 yards away. If you didn't know the four hundred yards away thing, it makes the difference. All, all the difference in the world. Yeah, people uh, and we. I've had I've had this exact case and had a great result. I've had other cases people call me with. It's a little different. We reject the case. So give me a call. We we'll talk about it. Let's do another. Right. Let's let's do this. <laughs> all right. Sam is driving in, the snow, in a snowstorm. This is very timely. Uh, he drives. He's driving within the speed limit. He hits a patch of ice he could not see. He slides across the center. Hits Sally's car head on. Does Sally have a case against Sam? I think she does. I would say yes, too. Yes, this is definitely a yes. Jury might be sympathetic to Sam, but he has a duty to drive at a, a speed appropriate for the roadway. So it's a snowstorm, it's ice, you gotta slow down, you gotta keep your car so on the right side of the road. if he was going really slow, would arguably, that make a difference? Yeah, arguably, okay. if he's going really slow and something you absolutely could not control, he might be able You'd to do this. You'd have to show negligence in the county or the city or the state. That's tough. Or those, something yeah. like that, those are right? tough cases. Mm -hmm. And for snow, you can't, you're not going to be able to do that. That but doesn't pass the smell test. Doesn't no. pass the smell <laughs> test. But he would have, a, she would have a case against Sam. Okay. Okay. That was an easy We're one. two for two right now. This ah. is exciting. Well, you, you guys are on a roll. I'm trying to build up your confidence here. All right. Mary works in the billing department in medical practice. She discovers the business is overbilling Medicare. She doesn't tell anybody. She does not tell anyone. She copies the fraudulent billings and morally outraged, she quits her job. Can Mary file a lawsuit against her former employer? No. Well, I would say no. Why would she? I mean. She should have said something she, about it. The correct, it could have been a mistake. The answer is yes. She does? She has a whistleblower claim. So if you have evidence of a business ripping off the federal government, in this case Medicare. You mean over, on purpose? Yeah, well, they're over, yeah, on purpose, overbilling Medicare. And you, you can bring that case as what they call a relator on behalf of the government. And the, the, the interesting thing about whistleblower cases is the per person who files it can recover like 15 to 25% of what the government gets. So recently, there's two doctors in, in South Dakota who, who filed one of these things. The government recovered $20 million, and they received $3.5 million for being whistleblowers. Does the identity well, of the I mean, whistleblower have to become public? It, it is Initially, everything is sealed. It will come out later. It can come up later, but there's a lot of very uh, tricky rules that you have to follow in order to pursue a whistleblower case. 
But uh, the government has created this to encourage whistleblowers to come forward. It's a That's really important tool I mean, I wouldn't think that she would fraud. have a case. I would think it would be morally an obligation to do that, but to know that you could get money out of that. So she, when she discovered this, she discovered it and she said, oh, this isn't right, they're doing this on the sly. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So she would have a case. This is why we need him to help us out, because <laughs> you never know if you have one or not. We, how often do we see Tom? Once a month? Once a month. We what need else, to right? see more of you. Yeah, we have to see him more often, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can always email him if you have a question of whether you have a case or not. You can also go to merrimanlegal.com if you want to uh, start things up that way. Because we don't know more. nothing. We don't know. Mm -mm. He does. I, I always have fun when you guys bring me on. I really appreciate it. Well, it's and, a blast. And, and I appreciate you guys. Give, give me the opportunity to stump you, uh, and uh, you're willing I jinxed to us. play the game. I jinxed us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's like putting grease on the monkey bars. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Tom. Thank Always you. a pleasure.